guys, it's Hill and Shadow, and welcome to my review for Boku no Hero Academia, episodes 36 and 37. Now, I do apologize for th these not being separate. I had a lot of complications with getting uh, my review last week getting um, recorded, so I decided to just wait and um, review these two together and have kind of two-for-one review for um, for this. this. This should be going up on Tuesday. I've been having um, a lot of stuff go on lately with school. We have school and everything like that, but um, definitely if you haven't seen either of these episodes, go watch them, especially the second one. But um, I'll try to make this as quick as possible and as thorough as I can make it in a short amount of time because I don't want this video to go to go on and on since my reviews are only about like 10 minutes in length usually and this is two, uh, two and one. And I know many people don't want to watch a 20 minute video of me just rambling here, but um, episode 36, just to start off with that, is titled uh, Stripping the Varnish. and it's really just um, the rest of the fights before Midori and Bakugo versus All Might. So, this episode starts right where we left off, where Ochako and Aoyama are facing off against 13, and um, we get the aftermath of where um, Aoyama asks if Ochako like Deku. She kind of like, Ochako kind of like just holds her face, like kind of like blushes and like grabs her face, and she flies at 13, but she, and then she remembers her, like, her training with Gunhead, so she's able to knock down 13 because 13 had to stop using her quirk. So they were able to get the win on 13 there. The next up, which was probably um, tied for my favorite fight of the um, episode, there was one of the there's one of the fight that was really good in this episode that I really liked, but it was Kaminari and Ashido versus Principal Nezu. And you wouldn't expect Principal Principal Nezu to um, really be able to do much because he's just his quirk is only that he's intelligent, and they reveal his quirk to be called um, high spec, and basically. Um, it actually makes him strong. It makes him smarter than any human. So he's doing all of these like precise calculations just in his head, where um, and he's calculating. He's um, riding a crane, so he's just knocking things down around him, and um, basically blocking off all the paths that they could possibly have to get to the um, escape gate, which is which is really good, definitely. Um, it was really cool to see that new layer of character on him because we've always seen him like sort of calm, collected, all that stuff, but he was turning kind of sadistic, which was pretty funny, and Recovery Girl's like, oh yeah, this is what happens when his, um, when he's interacting with humans, when he's like fighting humans like this, um, Principal Nezu's, um, inner self really comes out, but then, um, he actually keeps stalling them until the time limit goes off, which is pretty funny, they're there for 30 minutes, which is a time limit. 30 minutes of um, Nezu just knocking everything down in their um, in their tournament area. Oh, well, not tournament, their test area. So, um, Kaminari and Ashido, they do end up losing because they ran out of time. So, next up, which was my other really, um, my other real favorite fight that happened. Well, it wasn't really a fight, um, just based, of, because, based on the quirks, but it is uh, Koda and Jiro facing off against Present Mike, which, this was, re this was a really good one because, um, Koda and Jiro both have sound quirks, where Jiro can um, sort of kind of amplify sound and has her um, earphone jack, and then Koda can um, command animals. But present Mike has like a super amplifying sound quirk, and they actually give a little tidbit on how present Mike made his parents and the delivery doctor when he was born bleed through their ears, which is pretty dark. But um, it's kind of funny though, because present Mike seems like. Um, seems always so upbeat, so it doesn't really sound like him, but they have to try to figure out how, a way to beat President Mike, and the, eventually the way they do it is to get bugs, which uh, Koda is afraid of bugs, so he had to overcome that fear, and Koda actually talked in this episode, which is really amazing, so if you have, if you need really any main driving reason at all to watch this episode, other than the fact that it's a good episode, it, watch it because Koda talks, and it's the first time he's ever talked, and probably like one of the few rare moments that we'll actually see him talk, but um, but they actually, they end up winning because Koda commands the bugs to go underground, and they go underground and they start swarming present Mike, so he's not really able to do anything because he all, has all his bugs on him. So then the fourth fight of the episode, um, second last fight, was um, Shoji and Hagakure versus Snipe. This was a relatively fast fight um, because um, Shoji kind of like, um, they, they kind of they had to like trust each other without really talking out a plan because Hagakure kind of just disappeared because you know she is invisible and she took off her um, her gloves and boots. So um, Shoji kind of looked like he was giving up but then um, Hagakure was able to handcuff Snipe and they had a little moment where Snipe, where Snipe kind of touched um, 
Agakure and um, had the bounce joke, which is pretty funny. But then the final fight of, the, of this episode was uh, Sarah and Mineta versus Midnight. And, Mi- and Mineta gets automatically jealous of Sarah because Sarah gets hit with, Mi- with uh, Midnight's quirk, which I'm forgetting the name of her quirk. It has um, it has some name that's um, kind of long. I may have it on the screen. I may not. I haven't taken the screenshots for the video yet. But um, Mineta gets jealous because he touched because he touched um, he touched Midnight's chest and um, and then he, she was being his lap pillow basically. So they were so that was happening. And then Mineta has to like overcome himself because the only reason he wants to be a hero is because he wants to be um, he wants to be popular with girls. So he was thinking, um, because his original thought process was that um, was that heroes, the people become heroes because they're cool, but um, but actually what he what he figured out this episode was that cool people just become heroes, which is pretty cool. So um, so definitely um, he was able to overcome that. And he was able to um, basically strap Midnight down, but instead of putting the handcuffs on her, which is really weird, he really could have done that. Instead of putting the handcuffs on her when he um, when he locked her down with his um, with his special move grape rush, instead of putting the handcuffs on her, he um, took Sarah out of the scene and they went through the gate to um, to win the match. So that's it for um, that episode. It ends off with um, Midoriya and Bakugo going into their fight, um, going to their area to fight against All Might, which leads us into episode 37 titled Katsuki Bakugo Origin. Now the title makes you know it's going to be a good episode. So. Um, at first, we see uh, Midori and Bakugo not really um, wanting to team up. Well, actually, Midori is, is attempting to try to make a plan with Bakugo, but then Bakugo is just like, no, we're going to go head on, attack him. And All Might's just standing at the gate, and the first thing he does is just. Um, first thing he does is send, like, send, like a punch that, like, that, um, the air the air force from it, the, the um, wind pressure, just completely shatters, like, all the glass or anything that was there, because they're in, like, a kind of city area. And All Might's really acting like a villain, and he's just beating, he's really just like beating these guys up, even though um, they're kids, even though he's being restrained a lot by the weights. So, um, eventually, like, it shows some backstory on Bakugo, and Bakugo, um, how Bakugo was j- a very big fan of All Might, like Deku was, and how um, Bakugo really liked how All Might would always win no matter what, and that's the kind of um, perception of a hero that Bakugo got, that a hero will always win in the end. So, um, eventually Bakugo like, loses his motivation and he's like, I'd rather lose than work with Deku. So Deku goes up and punches him and takes him away because All Might was about to finish him off was about to finish Bakugo off. And they come up with a cool plan. Um Bakugo gives Midoriya one of his one of his um gauntlet things on his hand so that he can use Bakugo's power that was stored up into it. So they use that and it has a and Midoriya comments out how it has a ton of recoil. Because when Midori used it, because he, he's not used to using it, Bakugo is only used to using it. So when Midori used it, he had a ton of recoil on the shoulder, like pushed him back a ton. So, um, so eventually they they have solid teamwork. But then um, there were some really cool scenes, like um, All Might using because Midori was gonna make his way towards the um, toward, towards the escape gate by um, because Bakugo did throw him with the force of his explosion in the back, um, pushing him forward. So when Midori was about to um, start going to the escape to the gate. All Might did re- something really cool. He used his um New Hampshire smash and just thrusted himself backwards and almost like complete like almost like shattered Midoriya's back, which is really which is really crazy. But um eventually Midori Bakugo was um distracting All Might and Bakugo was like really down, really hurt and then Midoriya was about to go. It seemed like Midoriya was about to go to the escape gate, but instead, Midoriya rushes to All Might, and with a smile on his face, he said, "Move, please, All Might," and he and he um, punches All Might straight in the face to and so that he could bring um, Bakugo back. And now the reason All Might didn't pursue them here is because, well, Bakugo wouldn't have been able to see this, but I know Midoriya probably saw it. Um, All Might's time was running out. His um, the sort of invisible smoke was. Um, secreting from All Might's body. His time was up. He was bleeding. And so they, Midoriya and Bakugo were able to win the match. So, they're in Recovery Girl. Recovery Girl is scolding All Might about how he didn't really hold back, but All Might's sort of um, thinking about how much they've improved since they first started at UA. But, um, that's not the end of the episode. You would think that's the end of the episode. Like, sort of, 
um, Midoriya and All Might kind of like reflecting in their minds about what happened with everyone. But instead of that, um, we have one more scene in this episode, which is really crazy and really cool. Uh, we see the League of Villains headquarters, um, where um, Shigaraki once again being interested in Midoriya because um, because of you know how Midoriya is his quirk is very similar to All Might. But then um, this villain that we saw a few episodes back in episode I believe thirty one. Um, Giren, he said he was the one. I think he was he was the one that was showing that other guy the video about Stain, and he tells Shigaraki, he's like, "You've been you've been um, all the talk around town lately. I hear you're starting something pretty big." And then um, Giren, sh well, he signals that he has some, he has people for him that are there for for Shigaraki. Shigaraki says, "Who?" So we get um, so then he looks and he kind of recognizes um he recognizes one um he recognizes them. Which are they were not named in the show, but I'll give you their names now because of um, because I've gotten like, I've only gotten their name. I haven't gotten spoiled of what they can do really, but I know their names. But um, basically the guy, the guy, because it's a guy and a girl that come in. So the guy with like all those purple marks and everything like that kind of looks like he's sewed together kind of. Uh, his name is Dobby, and then the girl, the blonde girl who we saw kill a man in episode thirty one. Her name is Toga. So. That, those are definitely going to be some really important characters, especially when I start reading the manga. Um, I'm sure they're going to pop up, and um, that's the end of the episode. But then the final episode next week is going to be um, sort. Of, it's going to be kind of interesting because they're because the, some of those kids from UA, a friend group like Midoriya, um, Ochako, Ida, like all of them, they're going to the mall. But Midoriya is going to have a little encounter with Shigaraki while he's out on that excur excursion with his friends. So. I wonder how that's going to go. Shigaraki's, um, he's not wearing his hand on his face either, which is really interesting. So I can't wait to see what's going to happen in that episode, but, um, that's going to be the end of this review. I didn't want to make it too long. We're only at, uh, about 12 minutes right now. Um, so that's not too bad, because I know if I would have spent more, more time on, um, each episode, I would have been at, like, 20 minutes, and I don't know, I know people don't want to watch videos that are that long, but that's going to be the end of this review. Thank you all for watching. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And we are almost done with these Boku no Hero reviews. I know it feels like I've been doing them for so long, but we're almost done with them because we only have one more episode left of the season, which is really unfortunate. But with that, um, I'll see you all next time.